Unless you've been frozen like Elsa for the last two years, you know about the rivalry between Alex Pereira and Israel Adesanya. I want to make it a horror movie. Hey Adesanya, come to daddy. Without me, he wouldn't be here. It would have been exposed a long time ago. But everything you think you know is only the tip of the iceberg. The deep-rooted issues in the conflict run far deeper and went on for much longer than UFC 285. This is probably the greatest storyline in MMA history. As people know the story, but... Ah! Ah! <laughs> Bullet holes. It's every building here. We need to explain that it's not every day, it's not every time, it's not a danger. Constante. We're here right now. All of a sudden, the police can come, open a fire, and we have to go to one of these houses to hide ourselves. Okay. Then wait until they finish. It. They finish. Right. And sometimes it lasts long 12 hours, wow. 10 hours. Bodies bundled onto makeshift stretchers, into cars, whatever people would find. Others strewn onto the streets, along with bullet shells. <laughs> Crime is very prominent in Brazil's favelas. When we eventually met up with some of the gang members, we were made to wait and without cameras. And there in the middle of the street is their very own market stall with bags of cocaine, crack and marijuana carefully laid out for sale, completely out in the open and not a police vehicle in sight. And it is a problem which has affected Alex and his family directly, leading to the death of his older brother. Poucas pessoas sabem da história, né? Mas morreu com 18 anos, né? Eu e ele era que nem os meus dois filhos hoje. Pô, brigava pra caramba, dava trabalho pra caramba. O tempo todo junto, né? Pô, fazia tudo, tudo junto, tudo junto. Mas depois, assim, uns 15 anos, assim, mais ou menos, eu com, eu com uns 15 e ele 16, aí a gente se distanciou bem. Eu fui pra um lado, né? Trabalhar, ter as minhas coisas, ele escolheu um lado errado e. Infelizmente, né? É, infelizmente acabou indo pro lado errado e, e não tá aqui com a gente mais. Pô, poderia ter ido pro, pro mesmo lado, mas. É, pô, assim, outros colegas de infância, eu também, também pô, pô, pra mim, putz, não putz, tá nem mais também. aqui então. Sim. Condição de vida legal, né? Uhum. Meu pai, meu pai é pedreiro, minha mãe é dona de casa. Aqui em casa a gente tipo, nunca. Tipo, teve uma mesa, todo mundo vai sentar na mesa, não. Era uma cadeira ali. Dois no sofá, o no braço do sofá aqui, assistindo televisão e comendo. E eu lembro que um dia eu estava aqui sentado nesse sofá. Before finishing middle school, Alex dropped out to work as a bricklayer's assistant and later got a job at a tire shop to help provide for him and his family. E comecei a trabalhar cedo, né, em uma borracharia, com 12 anos de idade. 12, 12 anos de idade, fazendo trampo ali de adulto, entendeu? Mas ao, ao decorrer do tempo eu fui evoluindo ali, fazendo as coisas que vai com 14. 15, 16 anos era muito pesado, só um adulto conseguia fazer. Sim. Então assim, tive, tive essa fase, né? E pô, ne, nesse tempo eu aprendi também muitas coisas, como beber. Pô, eu bebia todos os dias, né? Eu chegava tarde em casa, chegava no outro dia, ia para as festinhas, para os rolês e ia trabalhar no outro assim, dia. E aí tentei parar, né? Por algumas vezes, três, quatro, cinco vezes. Pô, já perdi então mesmo, eu bebia quase um litro por dia. E isso eu, tive, eu não tive um controle. Né, com a bebida e pô, cada vez eu ia bebendo mais, cada vez eu ia bebendo mais. Você uh, might have been clean for two or three months, but once you have that first drink, it just sucks you back in, and it's the alcohol that controls you, and it's hard to escape it. It's like, yeah, but it's pretty fun. Yeah, well, it is, but you need something better than that. And what's better isn't being straight and 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 not making mistakes. It's like that's all prohibition in some sense. What's better is no. You need an adventure, man. You need to get out there and have something to do. Yeah. And and something worth waking up for. E aí eu falava pô tem que caçar um esporte. Aí pô futebol o Brasil é futebol. Só que cara nunca joguei bola não sei fazer nada. Vai brigar na rua. É. Aí eu falei, pô, brigar, eu já briguei, pô, eu levo o jeito, eu vou. Né? Então eu procurei a arte marcial, que foi o kickbox. Eu iniciei nas artes marciais em 2009. Alex started with kickboxing, and by this time he was 21 years old, which is considered to be a late age to pick up the sport, putting him behind many of the other competitors 
who had started their martial arts training in their early to mid teens. My first coach, he was deep into the indigenous culture. And he came and asked me if I had indigenous blood and I actually didn't know. So I came and asked for my father and he said that his grandparents and my mother's grandparents were all in, indigenous. E acho que mais confiante, é, querendo trabalhar uma imagem né, do índio, resgatar essa origem, né, esse movimento né, do arco e flecha, depois eu passo uma sequência junto com a minha música indígena e foi assim que tudo começou. E ali eu estava para uma batalha, né? The more he gets into it, the better he becomes as a fighter because he feels connected with his ancestors. He feels that he's part of something that is bigger than him. Os meus treinamentos são diferenciados. Eu entro a natureza nos meus treinamentos, como o movimento de borduna, movimentos animais, as danças indígenas, os cantos indígenas, que é para fortalecer o espírito, fortalecer a mente e o corpo, para nos deixar preparado para a batalha. A legitimate ancestor of people yeah. that were like tribal folks in Brazil, in the Amazon. He like, looks like it. He I mean, is, yeah, man. He look, looks like That's yeah. superior genetics, son. Aí depois eu estava treinando muito, mas mesmo assim bebia muito. Aí estava melhor, né? E aí eu, algumas coisas ali me atrapalhou. Eu falei, cara, mas eu tenho que parar de beber agora. Se eu não parar, eu bom, não vou ser ninguém. Né? There's a terrible risk in pursuing this new job. It's like, yeah, there is a terrible risk. There's a terrible risk in you staying with your job right now. There's no secure path forward. It's risk everywhere. Mm. Oh my God, that's terrible. It's like, yes, except for two things. You can pick your risk. And second, you're a lot tougher than you think. Mm. So even though there's risk everywhere, if you confront it forthrightly, what you'll find is that you can actually handle the risk. And that's the security. I did a year of training de base, depois já fui pro amador, sendo campeão paulista, campeão brasileiro, campeão sul-americano. Jerry não entrava ainda, não. não nada. Não, só pagar. Só pagar. Tinha que pagar para lutar. Inscrição, inscrição, viagem. Tinha algumas pessoas que. Me ajudava, entendeu? Tipo, comerciantes ali, vizinhos, né? Ou amigos até, fazer uma vaquinha, fazer uma coisa. Alex ended his amateur career with a total of 28 wins, 25 of which were by knockout. But he had still made next to nothing financially. His career would only really start to kick off when he turned pro and joined Glory Kickboxing at the age of 26. He'll make his Glory debut tonight in Zagreb. Introducing Alex Porta! Here that was his opponent, Dustin the Hanyak Jacoby! It's the only time I've ever been knocked out. You know, the guy knocks everybody out with the left hook. I can say that loud and proud because uh, there's several guys that have fallen victim to him. I would never bet against Pereira, man. Like the kind of snap that he has in his shots. And then he gets on the top of the fucking ropes and screams like a monster. My name is Israel Adesonia, and my moniker is the last style bender. And I kind of took that from a series called The Avatar. I was a dancer as a kid, just expressing. I've always been a show off. I've always liked to just be creative. And then picked up fighting later on. Years ago, they didn't want to say anything about me, like they knew of me, like all these guys in you know, the top echelon of the, of the game, in, in MMA and kickboxing. But they kind of like, didn't want to speak my name, because they might give a power, or even shall not be named. But now they're going to say my name, like, I'll be the next world champion. Fight. The only thing he had on me was retaliating with the leg kicks, but most of them I checked and fucked the belt. I know I'm the best fighter, I know I'm the better fighter, so the people know who the best is. But I'll be back. Every time I have a rematch, I, I, like I said, I adapt and I overcome every single time, so he just got added to my hit list. Being out here in Brazil is beautiful. I mean, I love the weather, and I've got a series of fight lined up, and this is my first one in Sao Paulo against um, Alex Pereira. He's a guy I already fought before. I'm in his backyard, and I want to take it to him, so I want to 
you know, come into his favela and slay him. caught me, flatlined me. That's the only time I've ever been knocked out. After this fight, Adesanya left Glory Kickboxing to join the UFC, and Alex went on to fight for the Glory Middleweight title against Simon Marcus. Watching Simon Marcus in the ring is truly awe-inspiring. This guy has been around the world. He's done it all. Multi-time Muay Thai world champion, multi-time Glory Kickboxing world champion. He's the current and reigning, of course, middleweight champion of the world. And this guy, pound for pound, does things that really no one else can do. Alex Pereira has the chance of a lifetime. Beat Simon Marcus, and he's a world champion. His record stands at 48 wins, 4 losses, 2 draws, and 27 career knockouts. For your winner, and new glory middleweight champion of the world, Alex! Hey, I know you don't like to smile much. Can you give us one? There he is, a smile from the champ. The second champion of the glory is very important for me. Muito importante para todas as pessoas que estão do meu lado, todas as pessoas envolvidas. Although Alex's success and glory may have felt bittersweet, as he was unable to share it with his older brother, who had passed away a few years earlier. Eu vejo assim, né, ele pelo lado do esporte, talvez se ele tivesse conhecido também, talvez, talvez poderia estar aí junto comigo, me ajudando nos treinos. Você acha que hoje ele ia estar do, do teu lado mais acompanhando ali tudo que tá vivendo ou seria um lutador também, talvez? Eu não diria é, oportunidade, ou tivesse conhecido o esporte aí. Eu acho que ele tinha tudo para ser também um, um lutador. Fortunately, however, Alex's younger sister, Alina, began to follow in his footsteps, also driven to get as far away from the favelas in which they were raised. Para todos os brasileiros que buscam lutar nos maiores eventos, assim como Glória, a gente está aqui, está abrindo portas. That may be the fastest knockdown in women's super bantamweight history. In fact, I'm sure of it. No emotion. Just like her brother, that counter left hook. Very good shot. Easy, easy work for Alina Pereira. My work. Easy work for Pelotón Pereira. For your winner. Ah, é um sentimento muito bom. É um sonho, né? Meu, do meu irmão, da minha família. E eu tô muito feliz de lutar no mesmo card que meu irmão. Vai ser vitória. Dose dupla. Said her goal in life is for her and her brother simultaneously hold glory world titles. Can you imagine being trained day in and day out by Alex Pereira, one of the most intense competitors we've ever seen? After only three fights in glory, she had a chance to win the women's bantamweight title, with the match being on the same fight card as one of Alex's fights. And it's time for the Super Bantamweight Championship. Five rounds of three minutes, the battle of the leading ladies. You can hear Pereira, the older brother, encouraging Alina to go forward, throw punches. That's crazy to me, to just think that you're watching your sister fight and have to go back. I couldn't even watch fights before the fight, never mind my sister fighting. That, that just shows you the, the strong mentality that they have. You can see Alex, her brother, already has his hands wrapped. And the winner by unanimous decision, Stephanie, the time bomb found soon. Being given a title shot so soon for Elena meant that she was far less experienced than her opponent that night. Despite this, she continued to train in the sport that likely saved her life, the same way it did for Alex. 
Alex's match on the fight card was for the light heavyweight glory title, as he had decided to move up a weight division after becoming the middleweight champion, in an attempt to be the first person in glory history to simultaneously hold two belts. Muito importante para mim ter esse cinturão, conquistar mais esse cinturão em uma outra categoria, uma coisa que ninguém fez dentro da organização. Lutei agora no médio, eu quero o meio pesado, Bakhtov. Representing Russia, please welcome Artem Vahita! It's time for glory! ever to hold championship belts in two divisions simultaneously. Despite Alex's success and glory, unless you were a hard kickboxing fan, which few people were, you'd have never heard of him. Glory wages are also much lower than the pay of organizations like the UFC, meaning Alex wasn't getting paid nearly enough for the talent he brought to the sport. Or whilst his former rival Israel Adesanya, the man he had already beaten twice, had left glory to join the UFC where he was becoming one of the biggest and wealthiest stars in the sport. At the end of the day, no one knows who the f he is, and he's gonna be that guy when I'm world champion, when I'm a legend. He's gonna be at some pub, talking some shit about, I beat that guy one time, trying to get a dick sucked from a crack horse, some shit. Few fighters have had as much hype coming into a UFC debut and a career as Israel Adesanya. He is one of the highest level kickboxers you're ever gonna see in MMA today. Little weights. I'm the new dog in the yard. His striking's out of this fucking world. His strikes are quick and they're accurate. He's Anderson Silva 2.0. He doesn't like the comparison. He said that he's right. the first Israel Adesanya. He's not the next anyone else. There's no one like me. Like, no one. Can he fight? Can he talk? Is he confident? But yet, does he understand that there's still room to grow? Like, all the things you need out of a prize fighter, that's it. So if he can keep developing in the way he has been, look out. You made your debut in February, then you fought again in April. Now you're fighting early July. Was the plan always to stay this active? Not just a win, a wipeout dominance over a top 10 fighter for the winner. And still undefeated. Many people, including me, think this kid is the future. You were one of the most exciting contenders. Now you are one of the most exciting champions. And I can't wait to see you fight for the undisputed title. Israel on his way to becoming the greatest middleweight champion of all time. I'm built for this. Boom! Israel Adesanya taking the middleweight! He's special, man. I think he's going to be the next big superstar. I really do. He's got the personality, charisma, the looks. He's got the fashion. He's got the dancing. He's got the walkouts. And he's got the skills to match. He almost fights like he's in a karate movie sometimes. He is so far and away better than everyone at 185 right now. Everything purpose every decision has a destination and to this point everything has gone according to plan do you still think about going up weight class um yeah i definitely will go up in weight class whether it be heavyweight or light heavyweight Ladies and gentlemen, here he is, the undisputed UFC light heavyweight champion of the world, Jan Blachowicz. Israel Adesanya was uh, in attendance today, and he was tweeting out champ squared. Is he fighting Jan Blachowicz next? Yeah. Israel Adesanya will be moving up to light heavyweight to challenge Jan Blachowicz for the 205 strap. Blachowicz and Adesanya. These guys will fight. I think that this is just such an important fight for both these guys. I am the champion of 205. If they give me a fight against him, I will be the first one who beat him in MMA. I've had harder fights, to be honest, even in middleweight, so... I'm ready for everything. Fight on the ground. I'm ready for decision. Good luck, Thank guys. You. Appreciate it. Very exciting. He has some of the best punching power I've ever seen in the light heavyweight division. Jan Blahovic literally went out there, outstruck Israel Adesanya on significant strikes every single round of the fight. 
I don't understand how that is possible. What's, uh, what's the emotions like right now after being the underdog yet again and, and handing this guy his, his first loss? I think Israel should should focus on, on middleweight right now. Get back in there and, you know, keep doing what he does. This is not a one-off. I definitely will be back. This is the dip in my story, you know what I mean? This is the bit where, you know, the valley, if you will, and then I rise up again like the phoenix that I am. But I'll remind them again why I'm the king at 185. After successfully defending his light heavyweight title, Yan went on to fight the next in line, Glover Teixeira. Do you view Glover as the number one contender right now? Yeah, Glover is, 100%. After losing his light heavyweight debut, Adesanya moved back down to middleweight, where he continued to lap the division, repairing his undefeatable image. He just breaks people. Israel Adesanya on his way to becoming the greatest middleweight champion of all time. I'm the champion. I'm the one with the belt. I'm the one with the gold. If you want to come get it. You have to show me somebody to be him. Well, let me show you somebody. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I don't know if you're aware of this, but Alex Pereira has decided tonight will be his final glory kickboxing match. He will be moving on to MMA. He is the former light heavyweight champion of the world, Artem Vahita. Here now is his opponent. been a legend in this sport we've seen you grow up before our eyes you were considered one of the best pound for pound fighters and glory of all time what would you like to say to your fans and your friends watching you right now as you say goodbye i came here to give it a show to all of you regardless of winning or losing and i feel good because i think that was what i gave to you guys i'm moving on to mma i signed with the ufc i'll be fighting on Madison square garden new york city on november 6th i hope i got all you guys support the only fighter to ever knock Style Bender out out of all combat sports. He's looking to make his move and put a mark in the UFC. This is one of my most looked forward to moments in this sport, is the emergence of Alex Pereira in the UFC. This is one of the most ferocious fighters that has ever entered into the sport. Knocked out Israel Adesanya with one punch, hit kickboxing glove, sends guys flying. The bogeyman of Israel Adesanya's career. I thought I would never When that guy was going to fight MMA, I'm like, hold on, baby. <laughs> Did you see the size of the fella? That motherfucker is so massive. Dude's just giant. He's an, he's an absolute giant. Who let this guy in? Alex is probably one of the greatest kickboxers on the planet. But in MMA, he has to now worry about going to the ground, an area he is a novice in. So who better to coach him than the current UFC light heavyweight champion? gonna have a problem with real elite grapplers but he's training with Glover and Glover is one of the best grapplers that ever fought in the 205 pound division there's something about specialists whether they're specialists in wrestling or specialists in kickboxing when you get someone who's that much better than everybody else at one skill it's just such an extraordinary thing and when every fight starts standing up the man can put people's lights out how long until Israel Adesanya has to start worrying about your name again we feel like you were brought here to fight him the moment that he find out that I signed right here, I believe that he's already been worrying about because he know of my potential, he knows how far I can get. Alex Pajeda is the boogeyman to Israel Adesanya. He follows them to a different sport. He hunts them down. Where do you get the motivation? Having somebody tell you, you know, that you were going to be in a bar and stuff, knowing that he's had struggles like that in his past, 
I'd be pissed off too. I cannot overstate how excited I am for the debut of Alex Pereira. We have been looking forward to you competing in the UFC for a long time. Your debut did not disappoint. Alex Pereira is the scariest guy on the planet right now. If I'm Israel Adesanya, I'm training tonight. A onça é um animal é, ágil, inteligente, é um animal astuto, né? é muito forte também, tem muitas qualidades e eu me inspiro muito porque eu acho que na hora da luta eu uso, consigo usar a minha inteligência, a minha agilidade, como é, cercando o tempo todo e a onça é assim, ela cerca até dar o... When we're leaving the arena, these guys are either getting wheeled to the post-fight press conference or wheeled to the ambulance. Where I think he's made a lot of improvements is him like embracing his stoic personality. In a sport that's filled with people that love the Connors. Stomp on his head as he's unconscious. And the Patties. You little fast. The guys that say a lot and do a lot, the way that he is like just his stoicness and the way he's just running with it and presenting it to the world. I love it. It makes people want to tune in more to see him because we all know he's a badass fighter. He's very stoic. He doesn't smile very often. He's almost a little intimidating. He's like a very serious guy. He doesn't talk too much. You never see him smile. He was always like intimidating all the time, like very serious all the time. Alex is a big, scary Brazilian. I think we all admit that. Alex's next opponent was Sean Strickland. Dude, he's not even a good striker, bro. Like, what, what is prayer? Like, f dude, the only reason to do that because you're tall, man. You're genetically gifted. If you were a, if you were a normal sized human being, you wouldn't even be here. Your style sucks. In the UFC, being the master marketers they are, they put the fight on the same card as Israel Adesanya, meaning that Alex and Israel would be in the same room as each other for the first time since they last fought in glory five years ago. What started as a regular wholesome press conference. You guys are a bunch of vicious bastards. I want to go down there and punch all you f***ers in the face. Took a turn that no one could have predicted. Sean, you got quite the lineup up there with you. Who's the best striker on stage? I mean, I would say no. me, but I mean, that man was the one that slept that man. So, you know, next to me, next to me, probably Alex. I mean, what was it like? 2-0 against Izzy? Is he, what was it? 2-0? Did you watch the whole fight? No, I don't watch Exactly, fight. do your f***ing job next time. Oh. oh man, I made the champion mad with his f***ing frosted tips and his gay little watch. Oh no! Sean Strickland, whose opponent was Alex, instead started insulting Adesanya at the press conference. No man that beats off the cartoons is gonna beat me! Bro, Calm trust down. me, if Calm you ever, down. I can tell you what, if you win this fight, when we fight, I knock you out, I'm gonna do a TikTok dance over your grave. Oh, fuck it, look at this! Grown ass man on fing TikTok. Maybe that's the problem, bro. And the you don't want this guy's a champion. Do something about you it. You don't want this guy's a Do champion. Do something about it then. Bro, any Do day. something about bro, it. I will walk outside with you right now. Right now, you want to get my number? Listen, bro, you're going to break a fing nail. Calm down. I'll break your fing face. Down. I'll Calm break your fing face. Hey, I'll Alex, break my nail in your face. This man, Alex, get this. Hey, man, you better focus on your guy. He's going to fing you up too. Yeah, the way he fing slept your ass. Winner of tonight's fight likely will lay claim to a middleweight championship opportunity. When he fought Strickland, when you saw the way Strickland stood in front of him. <laughs> hey, this guy, as unhinged as he is, fights like an accountant. I try to warn the fucking hillbilly, but he ain't listening to me. You got your part done. Israel Adesanya got his part done tonight. We know who's next, that poor time, poor heart. Without me, he wouldn't be here. He, he, there's no way he would have had a. He would have been exposed a long time ago. But I'll expose him this weekend. We all know what happened in the last two fights. I've always given him his respect. And again, when it's time, he'll give me my respect. Trust me, he knows I put him on skates last time. And this time, when I put you on skates, I'm gonna leave you frozen like Elsa. Oh, you freeze like Elsa. The hoverboard thing was stupid. I was like, Hey, bro, cool story. You do you. Is this a personal fight for you? Not for me. I'm doing my work and doing my job as I would be fighting anybody else. I'm just focused on, you know, fighting for the title. Well, me and him, we don't like each other. After this, we won't like each other. When we're old men, we won't like each other. It's just how it is. I know he can't last. 
I know you can't last. between Israel Adesanya and Alex Pereira gets ready. This could not be a better fight. Here we go, folks. This is crazy. Mixed martial arts at its finest. That's your father. I grab his dad and I say, your son is a world champion. That's what I say wow, to him. Wow, that is amazing. A, a Pereira's corner that round, it was like straight out of a movie. One of his trainers, I don't know who it was, was like, you're losing this fucking fight. You need to knock him out in this round. You have to move forward. You have to throw punches and bunches. You have to throw combinations. Let your fucking hands go. You're going to be a world champion in five minutes. I'm a humble person, a person who talks a little bit. The way I saw it, some people didn't like it. Eu peço desculpa, mas foi de uma forma saudável. Obrigado, muito, muito obrigado para todos que estão torcendo por mim. Muito obrigado você que sempre vem falando bem de mim em todas as entrevistas. Você é um cara que entende da arte marcial e fala a verdade. This is only your fifth MMA fight. You're only gonna get better at MMA. Bom, aquele vídeo que postaram, né, que a entrevista que o Senado de Cena fez, me motivou muito, né, me senti desafiado. Been crazy, isn't it? Like similar to the last time, same story. It's crazy. He is Thanos. You know there's a bad guy, a bad guy, and then there's this ultimate bad guy. Dread it. Run from it. Destiny arrives all the same. And now it's here. Or should I say, I am. Who was just in some fucking bar in Brazil, and then Izzy had to open his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Are you a good guy? trying to be bad or are you a bad guy trying to get no son show him he said like oh i don't think he's gonna want to meet a rematch i'm like fuck you. he doesn't know me yeah i'll fight you until i beat you the belt i'm coming for his head <laughs> ufc 287 in the main event middleweight champion alex Bejeda puts his title on the line in his rematch against former champ israel right, adesanya thank you thank you we're good Thank you. We're good. Até eu tô com medo de mim mesmo. Não vai te matar. Caralho, tô quebrando os espelhos aí, cara. Não, velho. Ele não me vê, velho. Por quê? I want to play a game. I want to play a game. The game is not over. You can run. No. Don't you care? Hi. The hunter now becomes a hunter. Cara, eu gosto de treinar, eu gosto de, de lutar, né? Essa parte de, de falar, eu tenho um pouco de dificuldade, por isso que eu não, eu não gosto muito. Give us your thoughts on what this means to you and how tomorrow night goes down. 
tomorrow, it's one and done. The last style bender, ladies and gentlemen. I remember, so the first time he knocked me out in Brazil, um, his son came into the ring and then started to just lie dead next to me. And I'm like, you f so I'll whoop your ass if your dad don't do it for you. But then, um, yeah, I looked for his kid and I, I pointed at him and I saw him and I was like, hey, hey, hey. Just to remind him. How old was the kid? Seven. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. Oh. If of course, Alex Pereira's kid was the age of five. Israel Adesanya's mentally aged five. And so that makes sense for him to do that back to him. They said revenge is sweet. And if you know me, I got a sweet tooth. At the end of the, the fight, he's like, that's it. He goes, we're not fighting again. I don't keep score. I settled him. It's pretty funny to be three and one and go, I think we've all seen enough. And after the loss, Alex decides to move up to the light heavyweight division. These middleweights should get on their knees and thank me because I got this man out of there. Because if not, you have to deal with him over and over again, all of you. And I doubt any of you would want to fight this guy. I did four times. You know, because Izzy's getting on his, you know, he's talking a bit of trash there. He was kind of laughing, you know. He said that all the middleweights should thank him because uh, Alex Pereira went up to 205. I do think they have unfinished business. In the meantime, Alex would make his light heavyweight debut. Jan Bohovic versus Alex Pereira at 205 would be fucking bananas. I think Izzy's harder to get down than no, well, Alex. Yeah, and I think Jan's going to get him down. He's gonna get him and down. I don't think he's getting up. time we start putting some respect on his name and saying is this the greatest athlete we've ever seen in fight sports is that where we're getting with Alex and because of how heated things had gotten for Sean Strickland in Israel at the press conference previously I don't want this guy is a do champion. something about it then bro do then. something about bro, it bro I will walk outside with you right now right now you want to get my number the fans now wanted to see Sean fight Izzy Israel Adesanya defends his middleweight title against fifth ranked Sean Strickland. I don't really see anything that he has for me that I haven't seen before, but yeah, uh, he is a dangerous man because he has nothing to lose and everything to gain. Question for Sean Strickland. Sean, you know, you have a chance to win the world title. Let's go! Let's go! God damn, you guys are awesome! You have a chance to win the world title this weekend, but I wonder how much more it would mean to take it off someone that people consider one of the greatest of all time. Here's the thing about the China man, you guys. Come on, Izzy, give me something, bro. What the f When you argue with a fool, those who are watching can't tell who's who. Oh, there we go. Sunday, I'm gonna knock this mother out. Right. That's all I give a f about. Yeah, you'll fucking do it for China. You'll do it for China, you will do it coward. for China. You I will do it for coward. Super Philip Lamb. I told Steve will knock you the f out, and I will knock you the f out. And at the day, you're still gonna have to look in the mirror and know that you're a little. And bitch. you sold your soul for monster. You sold your soul to that monster. Hey, listen, you guys, I can look in the mirror and be happy. Give me a dirt bike. I love monster, bro. I'm in line with monster. These mother backflip motorcycles. They came I'm up in my them. prime. I am in my prime. Yeah, I'm here. Prime, dude. Calm down, fucking China man. I don't really dislike him. He's just annoying. That's all. Ten times out of ten, he shouldn't be Adesanya. Uh, Israel's gonna win that one. I feel like he's just gonna need a miracle to be Izzy. I just don't see how he's gonna get it done. You can't really bet against Izzy. You know, he's kind of hit his stride, and uh, it's kind of crazy. I don't think anybody's gonna beat him for the next couple of years. If I had to guess, I would say Izzy. Izzy. Izzy KOs him. Being the clear underdog in the matchup. Who better to train with than the only man to have ever knocked Israel out? The 
recently we've seen an improbable friendship between you and Sean Strickland. What? You and Sean Strickland? Yep. In Connecticut? Sean Strickland is coming to Denver, Connecticut. Yep. Next he's, week. He's a bit of a... I'm going to learn English with him. What do you think? He said that he's going to learn English with Sean Strickland. Oh, my gosh. He's a bit of a crazy man, Sean Strickland. You know that, right? What English words do you assume Sean Strickland's teaching the killer Pereira? It's going to be p***y. It's going to be It's going to be p***y. It's some form of you're a p***y, don't be a p***y, or he's a p***y. Hi, my friend. How are you? Uh, man, wh where am I, bro? Where am I? <laughs> Sounds like I'm going to find some meth out here. Let's fight again. Don't knock me out this time. <laughs> you can still knock me out. What was it like training with Alex Pereira? Oh, dude, Alex is a man. We had a great workout, and I, we can, I, I think we're going to do this again, and uh, I think he's going to come down to the gym, and in the future, we're going to continue to train. I'm, in. I'm so happy here. I didn't realize that my footwork was so fucking bad, so I came here, I was doing a lot of footwork drills with Alex. He was the man, he showed me a lot of shit. Yeah, yeah, come, come. I don't want to be in the <laughs> Come on, bro. Hey, you're yeah, yeah. part of the gym, bro. Come on, here, bro. dude, yeah, yeah. Sean Strickland going over there to Sydney, Australia. What do you think happens in this fight against Israel Adesanya? You know that guy well. Adesanya is definitely a very uh, strong fighter and a uh, very hard fight for Strickling, but Strickling is at the top right now. At the top, guys, Strickling is the one that have more chance to beat at this time. Hey, Shiva. And they can see he's going direct to the He's going to go direct to the left. He's going to go to the right. He's parado. He's parado. He's like, oh, the guy is not so strong. So, you're going to play here, you're going to play. It's equilibrium. So, you're going to play a little bit more to the left. He went and trained with Alex Pereira. No matter what you feel about him, he is always trying to improve himself. Yep. And he will humble himself to do that. Whilst all this was going on, Alex's coach Glover had gotten his light heavyweight title taken from him by the samurai Yuri Prohaska. In the first round when uh, Glover got mount and was giving you ground and pound, were you talking to him? I sent him very nice, very nice, but still nothing. Uh, I, I wanted to, to show him uh, his ground and pound. He have no power to, to end me. He can't! No way! No f***ing way! Yuri f***ing tapped him out! There is a new light heavyweight champion! And then he decides to avenge Glover and fight Yuri Pohaska. They got a great storyline. <sighs> And after Alex's light heavyweight debut against Jan Blovich. This sets you up as a potential contender now for the light heavyweight title in your next fight. Yuri Prohaska faces former middleweight champ Alex Pereira. Say hello again to Yuri Prohaska. This guy is a knockout artist. He has left everyone in the UFC in his wake thus far. He said, when I get to the UFC, I want to take over. I want to be the champion. There's been some talk from the fans that this is the samurai versus the indigenous tribesmen. In terms of a stylistic matchup, Yiri versus Pereira. Man, what a fight that is going to be. And although Tashira spilled a, a bit of blood in that fight of his own, he's also absorbed a lot of information from uh, Prahashka, which he can just download into this younger, bigger, scarier, more powerful, more technically uh, proficient striker, and you know, kind of reclaim his belt in an indirect way. Cross your enemies totally. If you leave any sign of life, they'll come back for revenge. More is lost through stopping halfway than through total annihilation. The enemy will recover and will seek revenge. Crush him, not only in body but in spirit. Is there any part of you that feels like you really want to win this fight for multiple reasons, but one of them, because of his history with Glover Teixeira, your mentor, like you feel like you want to win this fight for Glover. Does that thought cross your mind? He's prepared. I'm prepared. We are ready to die. 
Yuri's in there dancing and shit. Yuri's like doing all kind of like weird stuff, right? And Alex is like, just stone face. Stone face. Like, yeah. I'm going to. It was one of the greatest stare downs ever. I'm going to kill you. Oh my These guys have not taken their eyes off each other the whole time. That's the most intense stare down I've ever seen. You know, because everyone says, well, you should be harmless, virtuous. You shouldn't do anyone any harm. You should sheath your competitive instinct. You shouldn't try to win. You know, you, you don't want to be too aggressive. You don't want to be too assertive. You want to take a back seat. No. Wrong. You should be a monster. An absolute monster. And then you should learn how to control it. Smile this big when he won the title. Everybody's so happy. I'm excited for the, I was more excited for the. Uh, Look at this guy. This guy is now champion in two weight divisions. He's beaten four champions. There's a guy that back in the days he did some interviewing, say that I was going to be a guy to just stay in a bar. So that motivated me, and he rescued me from a bar to be here today. This guy said that he just want to come back fighting 2027. I think he's a very talented guy. He's a waste for of talent. So I want to rescue him too, to come here and fight. Hey, Adesana, come to daddy. 